From our world headquarters in New York, it is Bloomberg Surveillance. This hour, we're brought to you by Town Motors Audi. And now joining us from London, the pride of the University of Alaska, Chief Executive Officer uh, of Rio Tinto, Tom Albanese. Tom, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Uh, uh, good to be with you, Tom. Uh, you look at uh, a tough earnings report. I want to move beyond that. What is the run rate on EBITDA that you're modeling out here? If you look at that key metric, that key operating uh, metric for any mining company, help the guys on the sell side here. What is the one-year, two-year, five-year run rate on EBITDA that you think is Rio Tinto's future? Yeah, well, again, in the first half, we, like everyone, have seen extremely tough market conditions. We've seen some of the LME prices dropping to levels, particularly aluminum, that we haven't seen in a long right. time. And I think the business, with underlying earnings, $2.6 billion, did very well in this period of time. Aluminum, for example, was right there at consensus. Uh, we've delivered very strong cost cuts during that period of time. Uh, the management team has been very focused. I've been very focused on getting those aluminum costs down. And across the board, I think we have been demonstrating quite a bit of progress. We pulled $770 million of costs out in the first half overall compared to the first half of 2008. And as you know, cost savings do tend to be a bit lagged. So we'll see more of those coming through the second half. And certainly on target with that $2.5 billion operating cost reduction that we flagged back in December of 2008. You're gonna by the end of the, no, talking to EBITDA, by the end of the second quarter, our EBITDA break even for all of our aluminum business with about $1,350 LME price. And again, as we've seen in the third quarter so far, LME prices have been quite strong, I think yeah. stronger than we and anyone else would have expected. So even though prices are improving in the third quarter, we're going to keep our focus on cost reduction. We're going to keep our focus on getting our businesses as lean and as strong as possible. Now, we would expect as we look ahead, the economies are going to improve. We're going to see ultimately the U.S. coming out of recession. That'll join with the current strong conditions we're seeing in China. And we will see a stronger demand picture, and we're going to be there for it. With, with all the debate of you and BHP Billiton, with China, Chinelco, and all that, is, is the basic idea here forward for Tom Albanese and Rio Tinto, the idea that you will exit aluminum? Is there a future in aluminum? I think of the lack of barriers to entry there. Have you just learned a lesson once and for all, and you well, stick I, I with think iron ore? Aluminum Aluminum, yeah, I think aluminum is going to be in the long term one of the key businesses for Rio Tinto. It's been a business, we've been in the aluminum business literally for decades. Uh, in the long term, it's going to be based upon scarcity of power, it's going to be based upon cost of production. We're going to focus on our cost of production. As we've seen in the third quarter, again, once things get tight, prices begin to move. And again, that's natural for any of these particular sectors. It is one of many businesses of Rio Tinto. Moving to, of course, iron ore, of course, we will be very, very focused on uh, continuing to deliver to our Asian customers, in particular the Chinese customers, at full capacity. We're running our businesses at full capacity, and we intend to keep doing mm -hmm. so in these strong markets. But looking ahead, looking into 2010, it's quite important for us, for me, to get this iron ore production joint venture in. We're going to see uh, synergies of $10 billion or more. They're going to be very important for our shareholders. One of our stories on the Bloomberg this morning, relations between Australia and China are beset by, quote, difficulties. Foreign Minister Stephen Smith said today as the Australian ambassador flew back from Beijing to discuss strained ties, which, of course, includes the detention of, of some of your executives. How big a problem is this for you, and, and can you see a resolution? Uh, we have uh, a number of challenges in, uh, in China at the moment, but from my own personal perspective, from the perspective of our management team, we are ve working very hard to, to, to actually sit down, uh, look at all of the issues, and look at building those relationships. And I think they are quite important, uh, certainly, I think, from a Chinalco perspective. In the long term, I think there are things we can do together, the things that we can do that make sense. Well, um, certainly, with respect to the detention of the four employees, uh, we are doing everything we can for those employees and their family. Very, very uh, concerned about the, about the well-being of those uh, employees. And again, we'll be very focused on that. And again, I was heartened to see last week that we saw that the actual arrest details were less serious than people had been speculating beforehand. Uh, the employees now have their um, legal representation, and we will respect that Chinese legal process. Well, from where we sit here in the U.S., the sort of knee-jerk reaction is, okay, the Chinese economy goes up. That means they're going to buy more stuff from you. Now, is there a chance that they're just going to cut you off over all this? 
Uh, I, I think from our perspective, we are continuing to sell all of our products that we sell into China on pretty much the same basis we have been for the past several months. We are running at full capacity in our iron ore business. Uh, everything we have in the iron ore business is flat out meeting this strong demand in China. Tom, um, I, there's a number of ways to go here. I'd really like to continue on China, but just because of time, I want to talk about you and your your board of directors, the the, the politics that Ken and I are not that familiar with uh, in Australia. Is it safe to say that Tom Albanese has been saved here, along with Rio Tinto, by a buoyant Asian economy? That the, the, the Asian economy rode to the rescue here, and certainly the good news you've had with your rights issue, getting it done. You mentioned the BHP iron ore discussions that you're having. Uh, is the idea here that, that the main regressor for Rio Tinto is the idea you need a buoyant global economy? We certainly need a buoyant global economy like any business and certainly as chief executive, as chief executives in any business in any sectors certainly would be under quite a bit of pressure in these particular markets. But I would say that what I have done, what we have done through this global financial crisis has been to focus on the business of the business. We have been focusing on taking costs out of the business. We've been focusing on reducing our capital. We've been focusing on those tough decisions that are necessary. We've been focusing on the divestments, and we've been focusing on getting our debt down. There's not been a single stream of efforts, but the entire organization right. working together. And from my own personal perspective, I feel proud to be leading the tens of thousands of employees of Rio Tinto through what has been the most difficult period of global economic recession since World War II, and I see ourselves coming out of this stronger and fitter than ever before. Uh, uh, Tom Albanese, thank you so much, folks. Chief Executive Officer with uh, Rio Tinto. And